Hi there, Cherry here. I thought today we would do another form of fabric paper. Now you'll know if you follow my channel, you'll know that a couple of weeks ago I did a video on fabric paper using cheesecloth and napkins. And this is what it looks like. Makes great book covers or, you know, journal cards. I'm also going to uh, use some for bookmarks. Yeah, all kinds of uses. So I watched a friend of mine do a video using um, sheets, sheeting, and I thought that was a good idea. And her name is Carrie Gibson. She has two channels, Carrie Gibson Paint for watercolors and Carrie Gibson Mixed Media. And she has some wonderful videos that you should check out. So I'll put her uh, name in the description and you can check that out. So we're going to use, like I said, this is coffee stained cotton paper, cotton uh, material. This was a sheet that I cut up and we're going to use Mod Podge watered down. I, I do it sort of 60-40, 60 percent Mod Podge, 40 percent water. I just found 50-50, um, a little bit watery. So today I'm going with 60-40, uh, 60 percent Mod Podge, 40 percent water. Now I'm just uh, doing the base for our fabric paper. Quite generous amount of uh, our mixture here. Yeah, I have to uh, go digging for art supplies, or craft supplies, because I'm moving and everything is packed. Then it hits me, I want to do a video, and I have to go through boxes. <laughs> At least I marked all my boxes. So yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Okay, so we've got our base now for our uh, fabric paper. And today I thought I would use um, Tim Holtz collage papers, which I love. And I've been very um, precious with it. <laughs> so I thought, okay, break it down, Sherry. <laughs> Start using the stuff that you love. And I came to that conclusion when I started packing and realized I have a whole room full of art and craft supplies. So it was time to start using some of this stuff. So yeah, so this is the, um, which one is this? Botanical. We're going to use botanical. Um, aviary, which is the birds. And floral. So let's just start with our botanical. Now we already have some glue down, so we're just going to come in with some more glue to, and wrinkles are great. It just gives it texture, gives it character. I personally like having a few wrinkles in my work in situations like this. Okay, let's put another piece down here maybe. So it's a beautiful day out there today. Not that I would know, I haven't been out there, <laughs> but it looks beautiful, nice and sunny. Oh, this one wants to give me a hard time. Look at that. Okay, let's be a little more gentle. 
I think it's too dry underneath here, I think. I think that's what the problem is. So let's just add some more and then bring our paper down. There we go. That's what the problem was. It was too dry. There we go. Okay. Well, we can come back with some more of that in a bit. I'm going to uh, start off with the, uh, or start into the uh, aviary, the bird paper. Now I'm tearing at different with different shapes. I guess with this, it probably would be best just to put your t glue down and then come in with your paper rather than the gluing ahead of time because it's drying quite fast. So yeah. And another piece here maybe. This will be especially nice if you're doing a vintage journal or what, you know, vintage looking uh, journal cards. Okay. Another piece. Maybe a long piece like this. Uh, Right there, I think. Okay. A little piece down here. Yeah, sunny. I think it's probably about, I don't know, 15, 16. Which is sixty something, sixty-two, sixty-three. Okay, now let's jump in with the uh, floral. Going to add a little more color. So pretty. I love vintage. It's funny because I love vintage, vintage and I also love grunge. Probably totally different ends of the spectrum. Oh, that was quite wet, so that's okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. going this way. Oh, down it goes. So pretty. Now, I think 
I'm going to stick with the black and white because I really love that look. Something to be said for black and white. That little dry again. Nothing that we can't fix, right? Okay. And it's okay if a bit of the fabric comes through because it is, um, you know, an antique white look because of the coffee stain. So it works. So a little bit more. And up in our corner here. All right, now I'm going to dry that with my blow dryer. You can leave it overnight if you prefer. Add a little bit just to make sure everything's well adhered. Okay, so I'm going to uh, dry that with my blow dryer and then we'll come back and trim it and see what we have. Back in a flash. Okay, so our piece is all dry. What I'm going to do is just trim it up a little bit. This is how it looks on the front. And there's our sheet in the back. So following it from the back, I will trim off uh, the excess collage paper And there we have it. Now I don't have a book that needs to be covered that I have out at this point because of all the packing. So, but I do have some, where is that? This I use for scrap paper and I do happen to have this sitting on the table. So I'll just give you a peek at what it would look like using it as a cover something like this now you could put signatures in there or you could do you know a hard cover or a soft cover um, repurposed book where you leave the inside of the book and just cover each page up or do signatures either one this will work or it'll work to uh, cut up for uh, 
journal cards or bookmarks. Now, if you're doing a bookmark, you're going to have to measure it and, you know, have something stiff in the background. What I use for bookmarks is, um, you know, the um, people that collect magazines and they use sleeves, but they need something in there to keep it stiff. So they buy this. Um, it's like twice the size, two or three times the size of cardstock. And I get it online. And uh, yeah, so that can be used. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. That's always fun to do, a quick and easy uh, project. And uh turns out beautiful. In my eyes, this is beautiful. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now, folks.